or orange ruffled tuxedo because apparently she doesn't care for my opinion, so why should I care for her? But you didn't pick that out, right? What if I did? Then I would be really surprised. <laughs> I have Kristen in a blinged out nice. trumpet gown, which any girl who wants to be fabulous would try on. I want to find a dress that is just as outgoing and spicy as I am. And we're gonna go have a little private powwow, okay? okay. All right, everybody get started. I like that one, it's like fun. If I had a reason to, she hasn't given me a reason. She's never shown any difference. I don't know, I guess. Number four, Bride Heather. Heather thought bringing her fiancé along to the bridesmaid's dress appointment would be a fun way to involve him in the wedding planning. Little did she know, his strong personality would spark tension between them, turning what should have been a joyful occasion into a battleground. Nicknamed Groomzilla for his overbearing attitude, Heather's fiancé seemed determined to make everyone's lives miserable, especially hers. As they sifted through racks of dresses, his presence loomed like a dark cloud over the proceedings. Choosing bright Bridesmaid dresses, Heather believed, should be a decision left to the bride and her bridesmaids, not the groom. However, Groomzilla had other ideas. With a threat hanging over her head like a sword of Damocles, Heather knew she had to tread carefully. His ultimatum, choose a dress he doesn't like and he'd ensure the groomsmen wore hideous baby blue and orange tuxedos, loomed large, casting a shadow over her wedding plans. The theme of their wedding, Tuscan, Italian, and classy, a black tier affair, clashed with Groomzilla's vision of exposed and risque dresses. While Heather aimed for a look that was classy and conservative, her fiancé advocated for something more revealing, arguing that they shouldn't resemble nuns. With opinions flying left and right, the dress appointment quickly spiraled into chaos. Who's my bride? That's me. My name is Heather Dunn. I am 24. I am from Fort Benning, Georgia. Jason has a very strong personality. If he thinks something, that's just how it is. <laughs> I'm just trying to sit there and vocalize. I'm a loudmouth. Blue or orange ruffled tuxedo because apparently she doesn't care for my opinion, so why should I care for her? What dress are we looking for today? We're leaning towards royal blue, long and flowy, something that's not going to make them look Every dress they tried seemed to ignite a fresh round of debate, leaving the bridesmaids caught in the crossfire of the couple's conflicting visions. But amidst the turmoil, a glimmer of hope emerged. Through patient persuasion and gentle guidance, the consultants managed to school Groomzilla on the importance of compromise and keeping this bride happy. Slowly but surely, he began to see reason. Finally, after much deliberation, they found a dress that satisfied both bride and groom, an off-shoulder, long and classy conservative gown that struck the perfect balance between Heather's vision and Groomzilla's desire for elegance. As Heather watched her fiancé reluctantly concede, she couldn't help but feel a sense of relief wash over her. In that moment, she realized that love wasn't just about getting your way, it was about finding common ground and making sacrifices for the ones you love. And with their wedding plans back on track, Heather knew that no matter what challenge Challenges lay ahead, they would face them together as a team. We're gonna go have a little private powwow, okay? okay? All right, everybody get started. I like that one, it's like fun. So let's find some long dresses that are more conservative, like the one shoulder here. Uh -huh. And Erica, my sister, Allison, Kim, my mother, Alex, my soon to be brother in law. Yeah, that's a no go. That's exactly what I don't want. I don't want them looking around like nuns. I don't know what kind of nun would wear that. A fashionable one. Number three, Bride Cassie. Cassie's bridal appointment was supposed to be a joyful occasion, a chance for her closest friends to come together and help her find the perfect dress. But instead, it turned into a battlefield, with her best friends Danielle and Hannah at the center of the conflict. Hannah, Cassie's friend since freshman year of high school, harbored a deep-seated jealousy towards Danielle, whom Cassie had met later in life. Her resentment manifested in snootiness and rude behavior, exacerbated by a regrettable tweet aimed at Danielle when they first met. In response, Danielle retaliated with her own brand of hostility, and their relationship spiraled into a bitter rivalry. Their animosity made dress shopping a nightmare. With completely different body types and styles, finding a dress they both agreed on seemed impossible. Cassie, hoping to bridge the divide, expressed her desire for a pretty classy purple dress, hoping it would unite them in their common goal. But as they sifted through the options, tensions reached a boiling point, and the once-promising appointment descended into chaos. 
chaos. Words were exchanged, tempers flared, and Cassie found herself caught in the crossfire of her friend's feud. Thankfully, the consultants and Cassie's mom intervened, offering sage advice and a much-needed dose of perspective. With their guidance, Danielle and Hannah were forced to confront the damage their rivalry was causing, not just to each other but to Cassie as well. After a heart-to-heart -heart and a few tears, the walls began to crumble. Danielle and Hannah realized that their love for Cassie far outweighed their petty grievances. They apologized, acknowledging the hurt they had caused, and vowed to set aside their differences for the sake of their friend. I'm Mother Shark, my bride's man, Justin, my bridesmaids, Jackie, Emily, both of my best friends. But you should be the reason. The fact that it's both of my best friends, I think they both kind of are a little territorial of me. Thanks, too. Oh. What's happening there? But you didn't pick that out, right? What if I did? Then I would be really surprised. <laughs> In a moment of reconciliation, they put aside their differences and united behind Cassie's vision. With smiles on their faces and tears in their eyes, they agreed on a dress that embodied the spirit of friendship and compromise. As they left the bridal shop that day, Cassie felt a weight lift off her shoulders. Despite the rocky start, she knew that her wedding day would be a celebration of love and friendship thanks to the unwavering support of her best friends. And with their newfound understanding and solidarity, she looked forward to walking down the aisle knowing that they had overcome their differences and emerged stronger together. I want them all to have the same dress and they all have to agree. Do you think that's going to be a hard task? Oh, God, good luck. Really? I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> if I had reason to, she hasn't given me a reason. She's never shown any difference. I don't know, I guess. We hung out for a little bit, didn't really say a whole lot, and I think you told me later that day. You tweeted that she was with no personality. Number two, Bride Kristen. Prepare your tissues because we're diving into an emotional roller coaster filled with love, family bonds, and the quest for the perfect wedding gown. Meet Kristen, our radiant bride to be, accompanied by her remarkable mother, who has been her rock through life's ups and downs. As Kristen steps into the bridal boutique, all eyes are on her entourage, but it's her mother who shines brightest. Since her father's passing, Kristen's mom has taken on the roles of both parents with remarkable grace and resilience. With a budget of $3,000 in hand, and Kristen is determined to find a dress that not only matches her style, but also reflects her true essence. She's on the hunt for a gown that accentuates her curves and embodies her personality, and her mother's opinions holds significant sway in this monumental decision. But the butt is too big. I'm a little pancake butt. So a lot of the clothes, they assume you're... Opinions are very important when it comes to picking their child's wedding gown. Like mom, mom wanted me to look like the bride from coming to America. I have Kristen in a blinged out Ladies. trumpet gown, which any girl who wants to be fabulous would try on. What is your budget? 3,000. Well, if you can find a lot to play within the 3,000 range. Were there a particular style that you're interested in? The boutique consultants pull out all the stops to assist Kristen in her quest. However, the initial selection of dresses failed to evoke the desired reaction, leaving Kristen and her crew feeling somewhat disheartened. But just when they start to lose hope, a glimmer of possibility emerges with the discovery of a gown that holds promise. Through a few alterations and personalized touches, the dress begins to metamorphose into something truly enchanting, reigniting excitement within Kristen and her entourage. Standing before the mirror, adorned in her dream dress and surrounded by her loving support system, tears of joy begin to flow. It's a moment of pure euphoria and overwhelming emotion as Kristen realizes that she has found the perfect ensemble for her special day. In the end, Kristen's journey to find the ideal wedding dress serves as a poignant reminder of the power of love, the significance of family bonds, and the beauty of perseverance. With her mother by her side every step of the way, Kristen emerges triumphant, ready to embrace the next chapter of her life with poise and confidence. I'm Kristen. Today, I am meeting with Kristen. She's a local girl. She's bringing mom in. So we went totally in a different route. Romantic. Yeah, it's very yeah, different. Wow. Um, we actually met online. Then we just fell in love. I, I definitely need to try one. <laughs> Always a bridal consultant, never the bride. Oh, I think it's no. really pulling out the warm undertones in your skin. What were your thoughts about this particular style? 
Number 1. Bride Lauren Get ready for a bridal showdown hotter than a Tex-Mex taco on a scorching summer day. Enter Lauren, the vivacious bride with a personality as bold as her Texan roots, and her good old conservative dad, whose idea of wedding attire is as traditional as a Lone Star flag. Lauren's vibrant and outgoing nature sets her apart, but when it comes to choosing her wedding dress, she finds herself at odds with her dad's more traditional tastes. While Lauren is all about standing out and embracing her unique style, her dad favors the tried and true classics of purity and tradition, especially when it comes to the color white. With a budget of $4,000 and emotions running high, Lauren embarks on a quest to find a dress that will satisfy both her desire for individuality and her dad's preference for tradition. The first contender is her dad's pick, a classic white gown that falls flat with Lauren and her entourage. Try placing a daddy. The dad still sees the daughter as a little girl. Southern men are extremely traditional. Whatever she says goes, right? Well, you know, I'm here to try to keep things as conservative as possible. Here's a yes for me. <laughs> this is a no-go. Next. I want to find a dress that is just as outgoing and spicy as I am. The paddles are so that everybody doesn't talk at once. Mm -hmm. Yes or no, and that's it. Drawing stifled giggles instead of applause. Undeterred, Lauren takes another plunge into the dressing room and emerges in a gown that perfectly embodies her vibrant spirit. A light pink masterpiece with layers of tulle and a sweetheart neckline that leaves her breathless. It's daring, it's different, and it's everything she's ever dreamed of. The reactions from her family are mixed, with cheers and applause from some and a firm no from her dad, who remains steadfast in his belief in the sanctity of white. But with the support of the consultants, Lauren is transformed transformed into a vision of beauty with the addition of a veil and some finishing touches. In the end, even her dad can't resist the radiant happiness shining from his daughter's eyes. As Lauren beams with joy in her dream dress, her dad realizes that sometimes breaking tradition can lead to the most beautiful moments. Once again, tradition is something that's very important. I think I'm a little outside the box. But that's not really my forte, I reckon. Tell me what you're looking for. Strapless. Mm -hmm. Sweetheart neckline. Mm -hmm. I would ideally like to have a train. I feel very out of my skin in this dress. The dress just wasn't me. It didn't give me that feeling. <laughs> 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 That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.